What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gem Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, were you shocked? No. I wasn't shocked. No. I think we were headed in this direction. Certainly. Certainly. Um, Disney's announcements or non-announcements were mostly stalling for the inevitable. Regardless of the outcome of this, Brian, if this would have been in favor of Jonathan Majors, I still think Disney would have parted ways with him. I'm pretty sure they knew the details way before us and knew where things were heading and had, uh, they, already, they had prepared. So for those people who are shocked and uh, about this, uh, I wrote on, on the nerd basement, nerdy basement uh, on Instagram. I told, I, I said, if anyone is shocked, you should be ashamed of yourselves. <laughs> Your thoughts on this whole thing, Brian, and how quickly uh, Disney had a response for for what uh, transpired with Jonathan Majors. Yeah, so Jonathan Majors officially out entirely uh, at Marvel and Disney. So. Um, his portrayal of Kang in Loki season two is the last time you'll see that. And clearly we'll be getting the full fledged course correction of some kind for the story and the characters, uh, for the, and the characters going, going forward. Um, yeah, look, I think the only surprise here actually is how quickly we got to a resolution in the courts. I, I guess that was the only thing that surprised me. I feel like in cases like this, with a celebrity involved, you get appeals, you get discovery, you get all sorts of back and forth before you kind of get to a verdict. So I kind of was moderately surprised that we got all the way to conviction as fast as we did, which is, you know, that kind of says something in and of itself probably. Um, but I think Disney's posture was pretty well telegraphed. I think when we started seeing, you know, the, the leaks to the well-placed journalists talking about that they were considering making the change, that they were kind of viewing the poor box office of quantum mania as an indictment of his lack of traction with audiences. That to me was a studio red flag that they were looking for a way out if the legal system would give it to them. And so it was not surprising to me that once the verdict came down, the ax came down right after that on his participation. What was interesting in the fallout from a Disney perspective is simply that you know, they've changed writers, they've changed directors. They have not changed movie titles yet. I assume that's going to happen. But for all the talk we've heard about maybe a full-fledged pivot to Doom, is there a chance, do you think, that they actually go for a recast and try to salvage the Kang path they were on in this multiverse saga? I think people are leaning towards finding some sort of resolution instead of a, a, a cold turkey, right? Uh, to sort of leave this behind and perhaps move for, obviously move forward. I don't know, Brian. That's a tough one. I haven't really given it out of thought. It just caught my eye because they, right, so they put Michael Waldron, who wrote season one of Loki, which obviously included the introduction of Kang, had a hand in writing Multiverse of Madness. We don't know exactly how much of the final output is his. And then now he's overseeing the writing of these two Avengers movies, which officially are still titled Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars. So you have the guy who brought Kang to the screen in charge, but we know that Jeff Loveness, the fired writer of Kang Dynasty, was the one who was kind of all about Kang and all about writing Kang and wrote Quantumania. So that's what just got me curious as to like, they did not, they have not made it clear what is happening with the multiverse saga. And it makes me wonder given that if, now I think the major's performance was, the performance was excellent. You and I agree on that. But if the studio, I'm just trying to put myself in their shoes, if they legitimately think there's anything to this idea that he wasn't connecting with audiences from a commercial standpoint, they would then see the role as recastable 
or at least more recastable than you and I might see it as. And it makes me wonder, given Kang is kind of this multi multiple personality character anyway, is there a chance we get another Kang actor announced later this year? Or sorry, later in 2024. For me personally, there wasn't enough impact outside of the performance of of Jonathan Majors. Forget Kane. There wasn't a performance there, Brian, to really cling on to, to want to see it through. The way they ended Quantum Mania. The way they ended Loki. What is there else to see? What is there that interesting for this story to continue? That's where I'm at with it. Until I get some sort of indication as to where they might take this. Right now, all I care is about moving forward from this and the possible Doom references and how they'll do that with Fantastic Four and all the other stuff. I'm more interested in that than in Kang right now in, in my, for me. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm simply trying to say like, okay, Loki has given them a way out, as we know, that scene with young Victor Timely. However, I don't believe that the reach of that show is wide enough that that, that, that can stand alone as the complete retcon. I think you would need to do it in a movie too, which leads us back to our, in my opinion, our Thor 5 discussion. To me, if, if they have Gareth Edwards on the hook, why not fast track that? You get the pivot on the Thor tone. You get the, you get the real sort of coda to Loki. And you use that as a way to drive home on the big screen. The idea that what you saw at the end of Quantumania has been subverted, has been literally erased from time because of what Loki did. That to me might be a way to both have a good movie, which Thor five, I think we, we agree could be in, the, in what we're he what we're hearing here, but also get the the movie going audience, not just the TV audience, understanding. Because I think if you, ju I, I just worry that like with where Marvel is, not a lot of credibility, right? So if they just show up with Doom in the next movie, there's a lot of people that are going to be scratching their heads, like, wait, what? Like, what just happened? You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, not you and me, but like a lot of people. That, that's what, and that's always been, I'm very protective of Doom, right? I'm almost more protective of Doom than I am of the remainder of Kang. There's a part of me that's like, look, if you're down this path, I'd almost rather you recast because there's like less damage to be done by finishing this than there is to shoehorning a bad or half-baked Doom into this. And now Doom has been ruined. That's my biggest like concern here. Not to turn this into a Doom discussion, Brian, but how they introduce Doom is Pivotal. He can't just show, show up on screen and us to be, it has to be an entrance. Similar, but not so much so. Um, there was, uh, I think there was an episode of, I think of Avengers, the animated series, uh, where Doom shows up for the first time and he walks through the Avengers, Brian. <laughs> he walks he it was that's that's the sort of entrance he has to make not necessarily fighting them but his when he first shows up on uh, on screen we have to be quite impressed we know that at one point there was a camp a post-credit cameo shot right that was one possibility a lot of rumors that for wakanda forever <clears throat> there was a Doom stand-in, right? It wasn't the actual actor, but there was that rumor that someone in the costume was gonna, sh and that, which is why that movie had Doom fingerprints that they never really confirmed in the final cut. Would you want Doom to have his initial appearance be in a credit scene, or would you rather have him be a headliner to a film? Start leaving because there have been breadcrumbs, Brian, that they have left that unanswered. One of them being, I don't know if you, this was revealed and I wasn't aware, but uh, in, I think, Ant-Man 2, 
the the guy that was wanting Hank Pym's tech, that was never revealed. True. The, the beginning um, scene in Submariner was supposed to be that that person, the female. Uh, yeah, she was working for Doom. They never made that the obvious woman, yeah. to anyone. So they have been breadcrumbs, but they haven't been obvious ones because we've been sort of dealing with this Kang situation. I think now there has to be a turn towards the grand scheme and the grand reveal. There has to not give it to us right away, but certainly lead us towards that. And it has to be some sort of exposition that works and that gets us excited. When we, because when we first, this is the thing, Brian, if we see him in his first outing in a film and he's defeated, <laughs> yeah. we're going back to square one. Yeah. And I don't want to see that. Not with Doom. I agree. It's just now I'm just trying to look at the projects we have on the board and trying to find like, where does he fit, right? It's like, Brave New World doesn't feel like the right place for him, and it's probably too far along for him to make an appearance. Thunderbolts, I hope, would not be the place that he makes an appearance. Um, I think it does not sound like the Fantastic Four movie itself is where they want to introduce him, so that's that's out. So then you kind of look around, and you're like, well, Deadpool 3 is not being used for that purpose. So like, where would it be? That's why it leads me like, it almost feels like it has to be a movie that we that is not currently on the calendar. Uh, because we just don't have a natural place for him to show up on the big screen in a meaningful way that connects sensibly to what we have. And you're right. If he's going to be viewed as the guy who is actually a level above the Council of Kangs, then he has to be pretty fearsome. So, yeah, he effectively has to show up in a manner that he's winning or has won or is three steps ahead in some capacity. He has Latveria, that's always his scapegoat, right? Um, there are rules that they have to be abided by, right? Before all hell breaks loose, right? Uh, so there are reasonings mm -hmm. for why Doom usually gets away with stuff. I mean, I think one thing that, that, one thing that would be, if they want to tease it, I would actually borrow from Age of Ultron. Because if you remember in Age of Ultron, that's the first time Wakanda is mentioned, right? There, there's no specific connection to Black Panther, but Wakanda is mentioned because of Ulysses Claw. Latveria, like that, you can make that a place somewhere. Like just, just make it a locale and that we go but it, to. But it was a place in Moon Knight. That place was never actually oh, true. They, where yeah. they were. That's Earth. fair. That's fair. But I think it has to, again, it has to be in a movie to me to really get this going. So, like, even if they didn't spend, like, that's where maybe you could fit it in one of the existing movies and just be like, you're referring to where they are. And that lets people know, like, oh, we're in Doom's backyard. Like, I, I, maybe that's a starting point. So there are some crumbs there, Brian, but they haven't fully been really... Uh as obvious or as important as you would want something like Doom to be. Yeah, I would agree, I would agree. But I mean, this is, you know, <laughs> I think the other thing that's gonna come out of this Majors fallout, I don't think you're ever gonna see Marvel bet on one person. On one person, yes, yes, yes. Ever. I mean, they did it with, I, to, with, with Robert Downey Jr. and it worked out, right? I mean, they did, but they didn't, right? So in fair, like they did, and he he was the headliner and biggest star, but in terms of what he was asked to do, as the movies as the movies themselves got bigger, he was kind of asked to do less, in part because he was so expensive. That was in one of the things in that Rise Reign of the MCU book was that like that back end deal that he had that started paying him fifty to seventy five million dollars a picture meant that they that's why he had a small part in the civil war that's why he had a small part in homecoming because they could no longer afford his price tag in non-avengers movies so actually they weren't solely reliant on him to carry the narrative 
uh, in a way that they were betting on Kang here. I just, I just don't think they'll ever leverage themselves to one actor the way that they seem to do with this. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Hey, they were on a hell of a run, and this is just a bump in the road. And hopefully they'll be figuring it out soon. And where does Jonathan Majors go from here? I mean, I'm not going to read the text messages that were part of the court record, but I mean, that guy, that guy was not short on ego in addition to many things. Certainly People, go not. Google it. Go Google it. The way he talks about himself and his future and his role in Hollywood and what he thought he was destined to become. Yeah. Hey, those are great. Those are uh, big ambitions, Brian. I'm pretty sure those are the things said about yourself in your quietest moments to hype <laughs> yourself up. Right? And he let someone in on that on that on that uh <clears throat> mechanism to get you going. Anybody can make a comeback. Um especially, you know, he's a talented dude. There's no question about it. Um, are there some personal issues there? Maybe. I don't know the guy, but there seems to be people who have known him to be a certain way. And uh, I think everyone deserves that second chance, I guess, at some point. I don't know. Um, it, but whatever it is, it'll take some time. Hopefully he does something for himself. He's, a, he's talented, man, and I think people I'm more interested in performance than his personal life. Um, but if he writes, if he wants the right people around him, obviously there's certain things about him that he has to sort of take an internal look and and see um, if there's a second chance there, right? Um, but uh, yeah. Anything else to add, Brian? No, I mean, I think at this point, like I said, we've had the Doom discussion. The plot has really thickened here. I'm fascinated to see how Disney does try to solve their way out of this. So I think that's really, as we head into the new year, the biggest, one of the biggest questions is like, what are they gonna do with the multiverse saga? Yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think. Do you think they're actually gonna recast Kang? Um, the memes are already coming out. Everybody hates Kang instead of everybody hates Chris, right? Uh, and there are some others that, you know, want to perhaps just move on and move, and move closer to the, the reveal of Doom. But let us know in the comments below what you guys think uh, of what the possibilities may be uh, going forward. And we'll see you next time. The show goes on! Yeah!